Hey, thanks for joining Rudy and me. We're studying the book of Zechariah, and we're in chapter 8 today. And uh, it says in verse 9, and you just said this yesterday, Rudy, there's a thus says the Lord. When God says, thus says the Lord, God's active. Let's not forget that God is active in the world. No matter what you see, God's active. Thus says the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. You who have recently been hearing these words from the mouths of the prophets who were present when the foundation was laid for the rebuilding of the temple, the house of the Lord of hosts. For before those days there were no wages for the people or animals. There was no safety from the foe and those who went out and came in. And I set them all against one another. I read a commentary on all of these passages and the author pointed out no money, no safety, and conflict in the midst. That's a tough place. But God says, but now I will. You remember yesterday we talked about the I am's, the I wills, and the thus says the Lord's. Here God says again, I will not deal with the remnant of this people as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts. There shall be a sowing of peace. The vine shall yield its fruit. The ground shall give its produce. The skies will give its dew. I'll cause the remnant of this people to possess all things. Just as you've been a cursing among the nations, O house of Judah, house of Israel, so I will save you and you'll be a blessing. Don't be afraid. Let your hands be strong. Let me just keep reading just a few more verses. Thus says the Lord of hosts, just as I purpose, listen to it, the will of God, I purpose to bring disaster upon you when your ancestors provoked me to wrath, I didn't relent, says the Lord of hosts. So again, I have purposed in these days to do good to Jerusalem, to the house of Judah. Do not be afraid. These are the things you shall do. Speak the truth to one another. Render in your gates judgments that are true. Make for peace. Don't devise evil in your hearts against one another. And love no false oath. For all these things I hate, says the Lord. And I've read a lot of verses there, Rudy. Uh, pick, pick some and explain well, <clears throat> one of the things that I have noticed that the Lord does when he's speaking to the prophets, he will speak about the future. Right. But he also speaks about the present. Uh -huh. And so what he's basically saying is like, what I've said may happen in the future, but know that it'll happen in the future because what I'm talking about, what he's talking about here is the temple is being rebuilt the foundation of right. the temple is being rebuilt know that that wouldn't have happened without me allowing it to happen right. and so you ha you have faith for the future because he is showing you something in the present he doesn't always show you something in the present but he showed these something in the present because they had been afflicted for those 70 years and this was a I, you know, as a form of grace. Yeah, yeah. So, a couple of days ago, uh, we read where the people came and entreated the Lord. And, and when I read that, I thought they were saying, well, God, we have a plan, and we, we would like you to bless our plan. Here, what we have is God saying, I am, I am active, I will, I purpose, th thus I speak, thus saith the Lord. God is active. And so we really do well to not say, God, I have a plan for you. Come bless my plan. Wow. But rather we do well to come and say, Lord, what is your purpose? What is your plan? And how can I align my life with your plan? Uh, I've, I've been reading, as you all have heard me say a number of times, slowly through the book of Isaiah. And one of the things that John Oswald, who I'm reading his commentary, one of the things that he says over and over again is that the people were coming trying to manipulate God. They, they, they knew what they wanted and they were trying to arrange the situation so God would give them what they want. That happens to be idolatry. And it, 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 it's easier to see back when you're looking, reading Isaiah than it is to look at my own life. Uh, you know, it is so important that when we come before God, we say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm releasing, I'm releasing my stuff. 
I am giving it to you. Show me what you're up to and help me follow your will. You know, in, in prayer, there's a lot of times I'm just like everybody else and telling God how to fix stuff. Yeah. And he's interested to hear your heart. He's interested that you get to hear your own heart. Right. Uh, but ultimately, the greatest prayer in the world is Father, help. Yeah. Because it's not, you know, we really can't devise the correct plan. Yeah. Uh, he may give us the ideas to that. Right. And hallelujah to that. Right. But one of the things he was reminding the children of Israel of the remnant that was back in the land that was coming back from Babylon is that he said before that things will change he said in chapter 7 at the very end thus the land they left was desolate yeah. so that no one went to and fro and the pleasant land was made desolate yeah. well that's another one of the signs is that Israel is coming back to life and, you know, we have seen what happened in the first century. Uh, then we've seen what's happened in the 21st century to Israel. And really they have a, a tremendous parallel. Yeah. Uh, so, yet, it's still not as big as it will be in the very end. And so we, we, our minds probably go to the goodness of what God will do. But I think that we also have to remember the terror that comes before that. And we can't allow what happens in the retaking of Israel to begin to allow us to think that we don't, whatever we were believing is not true anymore. Mm -hmm. The fact is, is that the storm comes before the day. Yeah. And in everything, there is a place that God creates a peace for you in the storm. Yeah. And the peace in the storm always is for me the future. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Let's, let's just, we've got a, a minute or two. Behavior is always tied. Our behavior is always tied to God's activity. And so God has stated his activity. I have purposed, I'm gonna do this, I am, I will, I've talked about that. But then he says this, this is what you ought to do. Speak the truth to one another. Come on. Render in your gates, this is a judicial <laughs> system. Render in your gates judgments that are true and make for peace. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one another and love no false oaths. These are things I hate. And so as we think about our own lives, uh, we need to say, God, help me to live this out. Uh, you know, as you all know, we're in an election year. When you think about people that you're electing, look at these words and say, how do these match up with the person I may vote for? You know, what do I know about that person as it, as it goes to God's standard? Uh, as you're praying, Lord, please grant to us leaders, whether, whether they're in business or the church or in government, wherever they might be, Lord, give us leaders who emulate these characteristics. You want to have the last comment and then pray for us? Well, like, I, I think... It's interesting again that if you you think about the orphans, widows, and aliens, you're not going to have wrong judgment. Yeah, you could, but thinking about them does kind of position you in the place because that is a state of humility and, and contriteness that the Lord can speak into, and we can't be doing things because. We've heard it said, everybody does it. Yeah. That's a, sometimes in that, that's a false oath. And right. we need to think about that. Yeah. And 
it's really prevalent in the world today. Right, absolutely. Pray for us. Father, uh, we pray that your light would expose, Lord, the evil in the world that takes your word and changes it, Father. Mm -hmm. Father, may your light pass through us and feed us, Lord, that we might have peace. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, dispel the darkness. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Rudy, thank you. Thank you all for listening. We could talk a long time on this today. And we appreciate you listening. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.